Did you know that just like dogs and cats, snakes can also get spayed or neutered? Not only can they, today Zinnia the ball python is going to get spayed. Now I will say that spaying or neutering a snake is not a regular procedure or something you do just to prevent unwanted baby snakes. Instead, it is done as a needed procedure due to some sort of medical concern. So a male snake may have to get neutered because of primarily prolapse issues. So whether that means a male snake has prolapsed so many times that there's no other way to prevent it or stop it from happening, the only option is to neuter the snake. Or if a snake has prolapsed and it's such a bad prolapse or it went unnoticed long enough that the hemipenes start to go necrotic. In that case, a snake may have to get neutered as well. And in female snakes, they may have to get spayed because of either egg binding issues. So the snake has produced eggs, but they fail to be able to push them through the body successfully. So whether, again, kind of same situation as in a male snake, whether the female just continuously gets egg bound year to year and the vet just decides, you know what, this snake shouldn't breed anymore. We're just gonna spay it while we remove the eggs at the same time. It's usually how that happens. Or if the snake had such a bad egg binding incident that the vet is like, we're not even gonna try this again. We're gonna remove the eggs, but then again, spay them at the same time. Usually it just gets done during the same procedure. Another reason why why a female snake may have to get spayed and is actually the case today with zinnia is if they create eggs inside of the oviduct but then the eggs are retained inside of the snake so basically the snake doesn't know they have eggs anymore and so they don't push them out they don't continue development of those eggs they just stay there in the oviduct itself and this snake zinnia was bred last year she produced eggs retained them and has had these eggs in her for about a year now and those eggs are starting to rot inside of her and cause an infection in the oviduct itself. This type of incident is called follicular stasis, where basically the follicles developed, but now they are stagnant. They are not going anywhere, and she doesn't know any different. She seems healthy. She's a very sweet girl. I think she's, what, a calico morph? I'm actually not positive. But the morph doesn't matter to us because, I mean, she needs help. I mean, she could be a $50,000 morph or just a plain old wild type female ball python. She needs help regardless, so I don't really care what her morph is. She's beautiful, but we're gonna get her spayed today because of this infection inside of her oviduct. Thankfully, the infection is just localized to the oviduct itself, and her previous owner has brought her to the vet multiple times. They have diagnosed her, but when her previous owner was given the quote for the spay surgery, which with her vet was about $2,500, that was just out of the budget, unfortunately, so she surrendered her to us, and we're gonna get that taken care of today, aren't we? Yes, we are. I don't think our vet is gonna charge $2,500 $500. That seems really high for a spay, by the way. I'm expecting it to be much lower. It's still a significant surgery, so we are forever thankful for our Patreon backers for their amazing, generous support because it's you guys who allow us to take in cases like this. She would have been euthanized otherwise because of the cost of the spay surgery, but thanks to you, we are bringing her in today, actually, to get spayed. You ready, Zinnia? You ready to go to the vet? You're gonna feel so much better. Well, you might not feel better right away, but after all of this, with your oviduct removed, which is essentially what's going to happen, then you're gonna feel so much better. All right, let's go to the vet. Well, I just dropped off Zinnia, and it sounds like this is gonna be an all day event because I mean, they have slow metabolism, so it takes a while for snakes to go under anesthesia. And similarly, it takes them a long time to come out of it. So even though the spay itself might not be a very long or difficult process, it's the anesthesia that will make this the all day event. There are also risks associated with any surgery with reptiles, but I am hoping, I have my fingers crossed, that Zinnia will be all right and she will make it through not only the surgery itself, but also won't crash after waking up from anesthesia, which happened with that Chinese water dragon that we had go into surgery um, a while back. But we brought her to Dr. Gates, who is our favorite vet in the world at Bush Lake Animal Hospital in Bloomington, Minnesota. Highly recommend him. He's worked on Rex before, actually. So Zinnia is in 
in very good hands and I will update you next when we hear from him. All right, we have Zinnia after her surgery and it went really, really well. We didn't bother her the day of surgery to film because she was still pretty out of it from the anesthesia, uh, but she is fully awake now that it's a day or a couple days later actually. She's but, really pretty. I didn't yeah. see the white. Yeah, isn't she pretty? I believe she's a calico morph. That's what usually causes that white speckling okay. at the sides. I don't know for sure though. I'll have to ask her previous owner to confirm. Um, What's her wound look like? Yeah, let's Because she seems to be fine. Yeah, she's acting totally normal. Here's the Aww. surgery site. So actually, Dr. Gates did it's a great job at blending or hiding the scar. Two and a half inches? Yeah, and well, the, what I love is he made the incision in between the um, scutes, the belly scutes, and the side scales, so you will yep. barely see the scar because there's a transition there anyway. Yeah, he's every time we've done stuff with snakes and he has to do surgery, he likes to do it there. So Yeah. Because you don't see as much of a transition here yeah. as you would here. Yep, so. exactly. So she'll definitely still have a scar. She'll yep. absolutely have a scar from this. But yeah, I mean, Dr. Gates showed me some pictures too. And here, let me show you quick. All right, here's a picture of Zinnia knocked out on the surgery table. Oh, this is Aww. right after surgery. So the she's ovaries... right upside down. Yep, she's yep, laying upside down. There's a nice warm bag of, I assume, saline solution to yeah. help keep her temperature what up. I think that is. Is that the, like a heart rate monitor? Yeah, probably. it does look like... Oh yeah, based on where it's located and kind of vet wraps to her chest there i believe that is probably makes sense because you can hear you just like that yep yep so i'm sure they still had to monitor that throughout surgery but yeah on the paper towel you can see the oh the follicles the follicles yep Yep. and what he removed from her was this oh man poor girl so what we're looking at here would be the infected follicles uh and this it was just disintegrating it was starting to fall apart and that's why it became such a bad infection but thankfully Mm. it was just localized to the fall or just to the ovaries yep so it was a pretty simple procedure just to remove oh. them and spay her. No more babies for you. No. Yeah, no more babies. No. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask her previous owner what hets she had, because I know she has some hets, but... Doesn't matter so anymore. Doesn't matter now. <laughs> She's a beautiful pet-only snake yeah. at this point. I mean, you can try and breed her. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> so she is now on pretty heavy antibiotics to make sure that she heals up properly from this surgery. And all we're going to do is keep her warm, keep her comfy. And the biggest question will be whether or not she eats. She has not been offered a meal yet since surgery because it's been less than a week. So we are going to give her a few more days to kind of calm down and um, heal up a little bit. And then we'll see if we can start her on maybe a small meal. Guess who ate yesterday? Zinnia did! Oh, you're such a good girl! You ate a frozen thawed rat, which means you're feeling good after surgery. You've got your comfort plant with you. So, yep, that's got to make you feel good too. Yay! All right, we're going to continue meds until that's done and take care of her normally otherwise. I mean, we're keeping her on paper just so that substrate doesn't get stuck in the wound, of course. So keeping thing as, things as clean as possible. I'm sorry, I'll quit bugging you. You enjoy your bin and just get better, girl. Here's Zinnia, guys. Yeah, she's doing really well. She's doing so well. It's been a couple months, actually, since her surgery. Was that Schomburg we got her? Yeah, it was. So July, I started uh, three months. Okay. So three months ago now, and she seems to be pretty much healed up. She's eating well, pooping well, she's shedding well. She's and warm as can be right she's now. She's nice and warm and toasty. She's such a sweetheart, too. Here is the uh, incision site, or the surgery site, and today we are going to be removing her stitches. I actually thought they were dissolvable ones, but I must have misheard, but they definitely are not since no. they are still there. No, they're still there. We probably should have taken them out about two months ago. Yeah, but. I didn't realize they were as dissolvable, <laughs> so it'll just be easier, hopefully to take out today yeah so what we're gonna do is just a little snip here and let's see we'll do a snip right there then we'll take just be able to pull that's what i'm hoping hopefully these yep there goes one Uh oh i'm gonna snip that one more time yep that shed is in the way yep don't want to pull the scab through and then this might be the last one let's see oh is it oh it's knotted on one side or something is it knotted down here there we go snip that top part so you don't have the knot right here here. Oh, nice. Did that get the one that was in here? Um, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I think that removed all the stitches. Awesome. There we and go. get some shed out of there. Yeah, we've got a little bit of scabbing that was just kind of stuck because of the stitches. Dang, that's a good, in, like a good uh, seal. Yeah. Like you wouldn't even know. You'd be like, eh, something happened there, but you wouldn't right. think that she just had a surgery there. Yeah, and this is only after three months of healing, and you can barely see yeah. it. 
I love how he made the cut right alongside, right in the uh, transitional. Chain. Yeah, the transitional area, exactly from the belly scutes to the lateral scutes, and because there's kind of a natural transition there anyway, he just blended it in. Yep. And you know, yeah, from be able here to tell. you can't even see anything. Really? No, maybe nice. if you like zoomed in on camera, but yeah, I mean there it is. But wow. yeah, give it one more shed, you won't even see that. Yeah, you are doing so well, Cynthia. You're such a good girl. All right, stitches are removed, and her antibiotics have been done for a long time. She's officially ready for adoption. Hooray! She's healed with those stitches out now. She be healed. Aww. All right, so now we're going to add her to our Available Animals for Adoption uh, photo album. And once we find her a good adoptive home, we'll do one final update with Zinnia. All right, we are finally at the point where Zinnia is getting adopted. And the reason why I have no voice is because we are at the St. Louis NARBC. We just finished an entire day of meet and greet for seven hours nonstop. I think it was longer than that. But... It might have been longer than that, and now I have no voice. But it is worth it to see Zinnia finally going to yeah. her new home. You are so sweet, Zinnia. So her new home is going to be with Kayla. Thank you so much for adopting Zinnia. I am so happy to be taking her home. <laughs> she is a beautiful ball python. She's been through a lot, as everybody here has seen. You'll have to wait till the video comes out to see the whole thing. But she's about five years old female. She's a calico more great eater on frozen thawed. She ate frozen thawed two days after her surgery. Wow. <laughs> That's how good of an eater she is. We also want to thank Bobby who helped orchestrate or facilitate this adoption to Kayla. So Bobby, you know who you are. Thank you so much for what you did to help make this happen. So thank you. Are you going to keep her name Zinnia? Yes. You yep, are? That is her name. I love it. It is staying. Awesome. So. Well, thank you so much guys for watching today's spaying a ball python and adopting her out video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about how and why ball pythons are spayed. And I'm so glad this worked out. Me too. So, thank you, Patreon backers, for your amazing support because you made this happen. Patreon backers, you allowed us to take her in, get her the surgery she needed so she didn't have to get euthanized, and now she's going home. So, also, thank you everybody for watching our videos because you help us also pay for the vet bills for these rescued animals. And we'll see you next time.